we recently took a trip to St. Martin. It was one of the stops on our Princess Cruise. This country is known for its beautiful, unique beaches and has some great shopping areas. St. Martin is divided in half with one side being on the Dutch side and the other side is located on the French side. If your cruise ports in Phillipsburg, that is located on the Dutch side of the island. When you first get off the ship, you will arrive in the port area of Phillipsburg. If you have an excursion booked, follow the directions listed on the information that you received. If it tells you to meet up at the port pickup area, that is located over here in this area. They have a couple different pickup areas, so watch for the numbers to find the area that you are supposed to be in. If you want to go into Phillipsburg, you can catch a taxi in this area, or you can take a water taxi. If you're wanting to save a little money, I would recommend the water taxi. It was only seven US dollars per person round trip, and children three and under are free. This was way cheaper than taking a regular taxi. The water taxis are located in this area over here. You will need to purchase your ticket from the stand, and they will give you a bracelet that will allow you to get back without having to pay any extra or to check into the booth area. You will then follow the signs around the building down the path to the water taxi. The taxi will take you over to downtown Phillipsburg area. It takes roughly 10 to 15 minutes to get you over there. When you're ready to go back, you will board the water taxi in the same area that they dropped you off in. If you would prefer to walk and save money on water taxi and regular taxis, that is also an option. One of the ship crew members told me that it's about a 20 to 30 minute walk to get to Phillipsburg, so if you choose to do that, make sure that you allow enough time to walk to get back to the ship if you choose to do that. When you arrive, you will be right along the beach area in Phillipsburg. You will see several beach chairs with umbrellas, up and down Great Bay Beach. These are not free, but you can rent one if you would like to. They'll cost you around 20 to $25 per day. You won't have any problem at all finding someone to sell you one. Uh, just walk up and down the road next to Great Day Beach. There are plenty of vendors there selling them and they will approach you and let you know that they are selling them. They also have several bars and restaurants along the beach area. So if you wanna stay there, go grab some food and a drink, then relax in a beach chair and enjoy the view, you can do that. If you're wondering how to pay, well, there is good news. Even though they are a Dutch and French country, they do accept euros and the US dollar. So you don't have to worry about money exchange. Here's a little tip for you. If you're looking for it to be a little bit quieter and more relaxing, then walk all the way down to the far end of the beach to some of the last chairs and umbrellas. It's typically less crowded on that end and a little bit quieter. The further you go down the beach, the less crowded and quieter it should get. Just remember, once you rent a chair though, that is yours. So you can't move unless you rent another one from a different vendor. Each area here is sectioned off and is operated by different vendors, either from hotels or restaurants or bars, depending on the location. So make sure when you find a spot, it's the spot that you wanna spend your time in. Instead of taking a traditional excursion, we decided to rent a Jeep and go see the island at our own pace and do the things that sounded most interesting to us. One of the things that we really wanted to see is Maho Beach. This beach is world famous for its location at the very end of Princess Juliana International Airport's runway. It's one of the most unusual beaches on the island of St. Martin. This is the area where planes land right overhead and it almost feels as if you can just reach up and touch them. They have a restaurant and bar here that have good food and drinks. They also display the arrival and departure schedules for the planes so you can anticipate what time they should arrive and when you should be preparing to get that perfect photo or video. This beach is very small and can quickly get crowded. However, if you're in the area, it is a must do. You should go by even if it's just for a little bit to watch a couple planes land. After leaving Maho Beach, we wanted to drive and explore the island a little bit. We wanted to try and find a nice beach somewhere that was a little less crowded. We had heard about how amazing the water is around St. Martin and wanted to see it for ourselves. 
Driving around the island was easy to do, but extremely hard to navigate. They don't have many road signs at all or markers of any kind to help you know where you're at. The map our rental company gave us really didn't help that much because there were no road signs or markers to show us where we're at to find ourselves on the map. We tried the GPS on our phones, but many areas the signal was pretty much non-existent, so we just had to pick a road and hope for the best. I figured, you know, if nothing else, we're on one end of the island, it's kind of small, we would just head in one direction and we'd probably end up on the other side at some point. We tried to find a couple beaches, but like I said, there were no signs or directions on how to get to them. We drove around these little towns for quite a while knowing that there was a beach in the area but we just could never find it eventually we went on to a larger beach and there were signs for that and it's orient beach this is a long beach area with several restaurants bars and shops scattered along it if you're looking for a beach area we didn't get to see the other beaches so we can't really say what they're like but this one was really nice if you're looking for something well more exotic Club Orient is located on the south end of Orient Beach, and this is the nudist beach area. So if you're not comfortable with that, I would not recommend going down or wandering down on the south end of the beach. Stay in the middle or on the other end. While driving around, there are several small towns with plenty of shopping areas. The only issue you might have is finding a parking spot. All of the locals that we encountered here were so friendly and pleasant. We didn't feel unsafe at all. Even though this is a French and Dutch island, you still drove on the right half of the roadway, just like you do in the US. There are several sightseeing areas along the way, like this one that we stopped at as we crossed over the Dutch side to the French side. There are stopping areas, or I guess you could say pull-off areas along the road where you can get out and get some photos or videos or whatever it is you want to do without stopping in the middle of traffic. One of the major differences that we noticed between the French side and the Dutch side is the Dutch side seems to be much nicer and more maintained. One of the locals told us it's because the hurricane that came through a few years ago. They said that the insurance companies on the French side have been slow to pay out, so much of the damage has not yet been fixed. Where the Dutch side, they said they've been able to repair most of the damage and move on from that disastrous storm. Even though the French side isn't as nice to look at as the Dutch side, do not skip out on it. They have some wonderful beaches, restaurants, shops, and great people over there that make it worth visiting. If you choose not to leave the port area and stay around Phillipsburg, there is plenty to do to keep you busy. You can take a water taxi or regular taxi into downtown Phillipsburg and find tons of shops, restaurants, and bars. This area is full of history too. If you don't want to take an excursion or rent a Jeep to drive around like we did, at least go walk around downtown Phillipsburg and see all the historical buildings and shops. If you don't want to leave the port area, you can still do shopping without having to go into Phillipsburg. The port has several shops with a couple bars and restaurants to enjoy, so you don't have to venture far from the ship if you don't want to. I would have to say this is a very nice country. If you're one of those people that are just a little apprehensive about getting out, maybe a little fearful of going to a new country to explore, this is one that I would recommend getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and going exploring because people are just so friendly, so nice, and it just seemed really safe here in the Phillipsburg area. So if you do want to get out, you want to get out of your comfort zone, this is the port stop. I believe that you should try that. This was a fun trip and one I think you would enjoy too. It's a beautiful country with a lot to offer. If you want to see more of our adventures, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you on the next next adventure.